Welcome to Athletes Lives Network exclusive interviews. Once an athlete, always an athlete. Welcome to Athletes Lives Network exclusive interviews. Today my guest is star basketball player and also businessman Cedric King. How you doing, Seth? How are you, Mr. Biggs? What's going on? Doing real good, man. Um, I'm glad I got the opportunity to finally see you, man. Been about 10 years, man. It's been a long time, man. I mean, uh, growing up in Calumet and, and trying to make amends for myself, going out uh, to Minnesota and to Wisconsin to play basketball, to pursue my dreams and, uh, you know, trying to make things happen. I ended up on the East Coast, and that's why I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Yes, yes. It was good to have you on. I'm uh, pretty much, man, I'm just going to ask you just about your life story, man, as far as um, sports-wise, uh, how you got into it, and then uh, just kind of give me, uh, the, the, the viewers just your, um, a timeline of, um, of, of Sad King. Uh, so let's start off, man. Give, give us some early influences in sports. Well, early influences in sports, uh, you know, I know everybody won't say this, but I want, I want to say my, my boys, my friends. I mean, growing up here in, in Calumet on McCook, you know, being uh, close to Antoine on Alexander and Jobby up the street from me on McCook and, and Marcus on McCook, uh, all we did was run together with each other. Uh, Henry Franklin was with us, uh, Trey, uh, Joe V, uh, so, Carl uh, Houseworth, so many people. And, and all we wanted to do was play basketball. All we wanted to do was play basketball. It didn't matter if it rained, if it snowed. We wanted to get up early, go over to each other's house, get with each other and go to the cage and play some hoop. Um, you know, really, my, my friends, you know, when we were around each other so much and, and playing the game, we understood how our connection was to each other and how we built our relationships off, off basketball and, and knew that we were just not just friends, but we were, we were buddies, we were brothers, we were cousins, we, we were everything with each other. No matter what we were doing, we were always trying to get each other involved in, in what we were doing. And that kind of kept us uh, in a, so to say, a light uh, in our neighborhoods to, to go out and try to pursue something. Coming from a, a small community, as everyone knows, in East Chicago, Indiana, uh, not many people uh, come out of our area and really go and become a big success. I mean, we do have a few people. The numbers should be much bigger, but our areas are really influenced by the drugs, by the gangs, by uh, bullying, by stuff that associates uh, with, with our upbringing that, that really can be effective to certain individuals unless you're strong-minded and strong-willing and I think that's what we were. Basketball kept us strong-minded, strong-willing and, and wanted to help us make better for our area, for our community, for our people, for our friends. So we love basketball so much so we just pursued it and we did whatever, whatever we could to try to help basketball lead us in the right direction. As you explained, growing up in the city of Chicago, um, you had a ton of friends uh, that you grew up with. Um, name some peers uh, at the time that you was growing up that was better than you in basketball, who you wanted to, um, to, to out, outdo growing up. <laughs> peers that I, I grew up with that I wanted to outdo. Some of my, my, my favorite guys I love playing ball with, uh, what we would call Shaka or Shock Vok. would always <laughs> come to the cage, we run running three men was always trying to run the court, you know, like no one could beat him, but you know, we always, it was heavy competition, wasn't no bad blood, but it, uh, it was great for the sport, uh, Fahim Mobley, I mean, Fahim would come to the cage and light it up, and you do whatever you got to do to light it up back in his face and, and try to play good D, and who would him? My homie, my homie from another mother, Woods. Woods, me and Woods would go to the court and we would play endlessly, one-on-one -on -one games at the cage. Uh, shooting free throws. I think that's why we shot great free throw percentages. Myself, Woods, Henry, Biddings, Job, Marcus, we would go to the cage, we would shoot free throws, and what we would do is the individual that missed the most free throws would get boots. Now, I know that's kind of crazy and aggressive, but I tell you, it, it portrayed an image in our mind that, hey, if I miss these free throws, man, I got five of my homies that's going to give me a boot for missing these free throws. And that really helped us improve on our game. And, and really playing at night with no lights, that's how we can form these jump shots, you know, that we have, at least myself. 
you know, being outside with one of my homies from, from Hunky Town, Eric Lowe. I would go out there and shoot, shoot hoops with him, and we would shoot at night. And that's how I really configured my, my, my J. You know, at an early age, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to, to get out there and, and, and dunk the ball. And, um, but some tendonitis came to the knees because I wanted to dunk so much, so I had to figure out how to evolve my game. And, uh, you know, I worked on it with my jump shot. So many endless games of 21 at the Cajun Horse. Uh, it's, I, I don't see it as much. I know I'm not here in East Chicago now, but I don't think, uh, you know, they play like we did. I mean, just picking up a basketball, going to, to the cage, going to Hunky Town, going to, to wherever you need to go to play ball to get better, especially bitty ball. Oh, my God. Bitty ball was so much for all of us, uh, you know, getting up early on that Saturday morning, not going to the rink and Gary, but going to the, to the to Kerry Gosh to throw on your yellow, your blue, your white jersey to play against, uh, you know, all your friends. Uh, you know, we don't have that as much now. I don't think, you know, in this area they're doing enough things for the youth, man, to really uh, to help them out. And that's that's what's frustrating to me. But, uh, you know, again, I don't, I don't want to keep portraying it, but it was my friends, man. My friends helped me, you know, without having friends and people around you that can, can tell you right or wrong or, or just being there for you. Sometimes you miss out on some things, and uh, you know we try to help each other always get better in whatever it was. The the last segment you you touched on the, the ability to kind of uh, to, to dunk. Um, give the viewers a little feedback on when you first dunked, and what kind of pressure did you have on you being one of the best players in the city. Oh, man, it's heavy pressure around here in Chicago. I mean, you know, if, if you mentally are not strong, you will fold. I mean, because it's going to always be someone that either thinks they're better or someone telling you that you're not good enough. I mean, uh, you know, it, it was hard, you know, because I wanted, once I was able to start dunking early, I wanted to not only try to increase my vertical, but, but try to be able to dunk more. And, and, and the dunking ability that I was given kind of, made me want to stray away from from my other game trying to focus on, on trying to get a jumper but being able to get to the basket and go around people and being able to ele elevate was, was a beautiful thing I'm but like, I, I, don't, I don't want to cut you off man you was dunking in the fifth grade <laughs> no this <laughs> that's abnormal <laughs> I, I don't I, all I can say is and I tell any kids and I, you ask my boys we were on the bikes early we were riding our bikes over around going to get on these bikes to go to swimming pools to, to go hoop and we were just working on our legs we were doing some crazy stuff like you know jumping off buildings and stuff like that but we were always chasing each other running around doing a lot of stuff that, that dealt with our legs that we wasn't really physically going into a weight room to work on it but we we knew that it, it was helping us because we just we, we all saw it I mean you know I did start early but my friends, you know, didn't, didn't blossom too late after. And it, it was funny because I figure it's funny because, you know, the bikes and stuff, riding those bikes were involved in our, so to say, our, our workout scheme that we really didn't know about as a youth. Um, but, but again, back to what you, you stated, I mean, you know, this city is, is definitely hard. I mean, it's very competitive and, uh, you know, you got to be strong and it's very political out here. So politics... Can, can affect anyone, you know, I mean, um, my father was, was in Indianapolis, and, and for a while I thought it, w it would have been better for me to go down to Broad Ripple in Indianapolis to focus on my game, and, I, and I, to this day, I kind of think I, I, I should have, you know, I've had opportunities where, you know, I committed to a junior college where the Division One wanted me to redshirt, and, and Woods tells me all the time that I should have went to the Division One because it would have allowed me to, to work out on the Division One level, but at the same time, again, basketball was our home to allow us to understand what, what kind of what our, our life was about, and it allowed me to focus on my social skills. I knew I was very sociable, so even though I didn't, wasn't able to go to the D1 and, and, and go to Broad Ripple and try to focus on my game and pursue it as much as all of us wanted to, I was able to do something else and I connected with people along from Minnesota to Wisconsin that were tremendous influences on my life. You touched on um, 
France being important. Um, give us your goals and mind states as you moved on to Westside Junior High School to play basketball, to actually play organized basketball. Well, when we got to Westside, I mean, all of me and my friends, what we wanted to do is try to try to take over the squad and try to bring our five to the table and, and try to make Westside a, a championship team. I mean, uh, it's funny that a lot of communities are not like ours, is that we're so close for so far. Like, you know, you can live in Calumet and go to Kirigash and end up at Central, and you got people going to Block, and then they end up at Central. And even though we were only like two minutes away, they weren't in the same school. So a lot of times, some of your bestest friends that you maybe want to play ball with played at other schools. So it was, it was really competitive around here because, you, you know, your boy might live in Hunky Town, so he doesn't go to carry guys. He goes to, to Block, and, and then instead of going to West Side. So it, it was really competitive, and I, that's what I loved about this area. And basketball kind of, uh, you know, kept individuals out of trouble. You know, basketball is a good development uh, skill, I think. Not just skill learning with the basketball, but learning developments of life, of team-oriented skills, and, you know, being able to be around certain people that maybe on first first scene or first vision of an individual, you may have had some misunderstanding or dislikes of that individual, but building that team structure, it helps you evolve into that person, and when we were at Westside, I mean, um, you know, we just wanted to do whatever we can to make ourselves better, to try to develop our skills, to, you know, when we got to Central, to be able to be that star athlete for that team, because we knew that our community was really heavily involved in basketball, and, and you, you know, some people stray away from the, the, the claps and the laughters and the smiles and the dislikes and the likes, but we know we all wanted it because we know when you were being talked about, that was very meaningful to, to you because out here is, is not a lot of stuff going on, so, you know, basketball and, and, and football and, and baseball, all these sports helps a lot of people in these communities uh, get out of trouble. And, go on with their life and become something. Now that you moved on to East Chicago Central from um, West Side, now what is your goals going into the school at uh, your freshman, sophomore, and junior season? My first goal is trying to make sure we got our grades right. <laughs> grades is a uh, sometimes an issue, uh, especially in this in this community. But uh want to make sure we got our grades right. We want to make sure that we was we was trying to get in that weight room. We were, we was looking at strength programs, not for the upper body mostly. We were trying to develop our hops. We knew coming in high school, we, we took the, we really took the vertical test to see how how high how we could jump. I remember I I, I was 36 inches uh, vertical in my freshman year. That's crazy. And, and you know. I wasn't a one foot leap, I was a two foot leap. So, um, you know, I didn't have an advantage of that, uh, you know, wanting to dunk off the one leg. I was a two foot leap, kind of like Dominique. But, and we just wanted to get better. Um, we, we had Coach Peterson in, in the facility. Man, shout out to Coach Peterson. Uh, you know, he, he could be making some major money, you know, working for some professional team because uh, he knew a lot about what he was doing in that, in that weight room uh, as far as your physical. Your, your strengths and your assets that you could, uh, you know, really capitalize on to help develop your game. So, um, you know, we spent a lot of time in the weight room, spent a lot of time in the gym as much as we could, and uh, we, we just wanted to follow the traits of our, uh, you know, older individuals and fellas that we, we love from the, you know, Coops, from the, you know, the Peets, from the, you know, all those guys, the Wayne Jacksons, the, the you know, the, all the all the main hoopers coming up uh, before us that, that kind of paid away the puckets, and all those guys that had a major impact on us, man. And we wanted to be as good or better than them because we felt that we could compete with them because when they would come out to the cage, we want to play ball with them young, and we was aggressive with them, so we knew that if we could stick together, we could do anything. I mean, um, you know, as bidding you know, told me, you know, and, and preached to me about, like, you know, class 97, you know, class 97 was, a, was, was our class, and, 
you know, a couple people that graduated in '98, they still was on the on the team with us in '97, and man, we had some some strong players. I mean, from from one to twelve, any of us could have won Division One. But again, we in a, uh, a small uh, populated area that's uh, very political, and um, you know, it ain't the best of cities. So I can guarantee any of us. If we were playing in other cities and other areas, we would have been going to play Division One ball. We had a really good team. Um, we, we made so, it. so is there any regrets playing on 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 that ball team? Because pretty much what you're saying is that one, one through twelve could have went somewhere else and averaged twenty twenty a game, but instead you wanted to stay at at home. Um, I could, I would definitely say we could have left, and I would I would say as an older individual now and, and a little smarter. I mean, I'm sure a few of us may have went to different schools. Um, we wouldn't have got caught up into the, you know, it's just our friends, we don't want to leave, and that kind of stuff. If we would have knew what we know now of, uh, you know, what we really could have done with our basketball skills and talents, I'm sure we would have taken at least some, some uh, opinionated uh, perspectives from other people and see what they have to offer to maybe help us. I mean, you know, we we were young and, you know, all we wanted to do was play ball and we thought that maybe, hey, it was competitive, you know, your shot would come and when your shot would come, you got to take advantage of it. But we definitely, it was, you know, I can't speak for everyone else, but it was definitely opportunities for us to go play at other schools and, and, and pursue our dreams. But, you know, sometimes people, uh, they don't really know what to do with their dreams or they're not prepared to really act on it. So I don't think a lot of us were prepared to act on that at that time. How about the coaching? Um, um, Coach Coach Todd, as you are now, you're older, more wiser, and know better basketball now, uh, how was the coaching then? Well, the coaching was, uh, was definitely one-sided. I mean, uh, they definitely knew who they wanted to play for the most part, but Coach Todd was a good, good guy. I'm not here to uh, talk bad about Coach Todd, but I mean, I think we had really good enough talent to really, you know, play more people, you know, like uh, some of the college teams now that you can do five in and five out. I mean, we had that ability to be able to do that instead of being, you know, five to seven deep on a 12-man bench, you know, so... Uh, you know, it, it was some great times, but uh, it, it definitely could have been some better, some changes that could have been made and some things that could have been done to give other people more opportunities. You have a lot of critics who say that, uh, say, say King, he, he peaked too early. And that his game never improved. Um, for for those critics, um, what, what do you say about that? I would say to those critics, uh, I don't think I peaked early. I, I think I peaked at, at the right the right time. And for me, I, what, what I do think is that uh, you know, and I, I would be a, a critic a critic to myself. I mean, I would think that I, I focus a lot more on my offensive game in my defensive game and when I wanted to focus more on my defensive game it may have been in the later stages of of my high school career but uh you know day in day out I mean my boys that I competed with every day are some of the best of the best like I said my, my boy Woods my boy Jeff my boy Job you know my cousin Keon you know Ezel any of these cats that we were running with on a day to day basis well, some of the best players around here, you know what I mean? So, you know, my boy Bob Bob Smith, they would come get me in 160-degree weather when we rode at the cage and hoop. I could hoop with the best of them. You know, again, it was just uh, a lot of political stuff that, that kind of let people have better opportunities. So, again, to the critics, man, you know, it's all good. I, 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 don't, I don't hate on anything you got to say because I'm not perfect anyway, you know what I mean? I know I'm not perfect. But I do know that I, I, I was definitely one of the premier athletes around here, and I, and I, you know, my boys were best of that for me as well, but, uh, you know, peaking early, maybe sometime people do, uh, you know, if critics believe that I peaked early, I mean, uh, you know, I would touche that, but I think, uh, you know, I was definitely uh, a well-respected ball player in this area, you know, I did my thing in, in any of the leagues that we had, I competed hard. And, um, and that's it. I represented for my, my neighborhood to the fullest. And, 
and I'm, I'm really appreciative of, of everything that, that the critics and my people that, that's blessed me have brought to, to me, and that's, that allowed me and helped me to get in a position and be a strong individual as I am today. Okay, you were, you're a senior in high school now. Now it's time for college. Um, give us some feedback on your recruiting options that you had going into the summer of 97. Okay. Um, again, I, I'll, I'll go back to a couple things I stated. Uh, you know, I had a couple opportunities with uh, Division One St. Francis uh, right in Fort Wayne. Um, I had opportunities, and I'm sure Gideon's success for this is I could have went to Purdue to play football. Um, they did talk to me without me putting on any pads, but I was, uh, I was a true breed of a basketball player. So Never played football. I don't, I don't know why, man. You was you was a stud, man. And to this day, Coach Richards always said, if you could have had, you know, you, Woods, and Job, Jefferson, man, it would it, have been crazy. Troy Akery was good in football as well. Yeah, man, he was caught up in the b-ball hype, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I love Coach Richardson for that. I appreciate you. Um, but, uh... Yeah, man, uh, you know, I just, my, my senior year, uh, I, I was dealing with, you know, I went and visited St. Francis, and I would have had to red shirt to, to play there, but they were willing to give me a scholarship three years. Uh, I just had to, to take out a loan for that first semester of the school. I didn't know if I wanted to do that. I was talking to uh, a D2 and two junior colleges, and, um, you know, I don't know what it was, but, uh, you know, I, I'm a guy that I guess I'm all about trying to get out and, and, and do something for myself. So I was like, I could stay in Indiana, I could, uh, you know, just be close to home, or, or should I go out there and try to test the water and see what's going on in the world? And I ended up going to Minnesota to a junior college, uh, Bethany Lutheran College. I went out there and, uh, you know, it was some of the best times of my life, uh, you know, playing ball and, you know, we went far in our division. I shot. 38% from three, still <laughs> able, being able to get up and out there connecting with people. And that was one of the best parts about everything. One of my closest friends now, his dad is uh, one of the owners of the Minnesota Timberwolves and part owner of a corporation called Taylor Courts. And Glenn Taylor invented the first hologram car. So any cars that you see in the store that's got like a hologram kind of look to it, he, he invented that. Wow. Um, you know, went and played ball there and met some of my, my closest friends and we all, after graduating, I got my associate's degree in, uh, in business management. That's when I kind of knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and focus on, on business but still be attached with basketball and see how far I can take it but use the business element to help me along the way. So I ended up going, after graduating from there to Wisconsin and I went to uh, Carroll University and that was one of the biggest business schools in the area. And uh, I went there, got my uh, Bachelor of Science in Business Management. They helped me with my people skills, my, my interview skills, and all that stuff that I think is really helping me to this point. I mean, you know, sometimes people ask me wh where I'm from, and, and I represent Indiana to the fullest. I mean, I don't mean to go in my wallet, but I've, I've been on the East Coast for 10 years. And, you know, I still represent my neighborhood, man. I mean, uh, I try to represent to the fullest because I know it's not a lot going on in, uh, in Indiana, man. So when I'm out you know, trying to make things happen, I, I try to represent for us. I mean, when I was in Wisconsin playing ball, you know, it's funny how, how God works and how things are set up. Um, the guy who I became really cool with, his name was Scott Baker. His dad was Ted Baker, who was one of the alumni basketball player and Fortune 500 uh, CEOs and he connected with me and, and liked my business element and my personable skills and one of his good friends were um, of a different color as well and he kind of related to me and, and saw that I was from a small community but he saw me with these big dreams and these big visions to try to go do these things so before I even got done with college, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do, and I know I want to be connected to basketball. My friend's dad, he makes a call, and I end up working for the New Jersey Nets. I wanted to be a scout if I couldn't be a hooper. I figure I'm young, I know the game, 
you know, I could recruit. That would be an awesome job for me. That, that wasn't available. So I became um, a corporate VIP sales rep selling course out seats for the Nets. But I got to play in the gym. I got to go to the games. I got to keep the element of basketball in my life, which was a beautiful thing. I never wanted to, to let this job go, but, um, you know, things come along in life where they trade players. The ticket value of sitting on an $85,000 court size seat doesn't look as, as comfortable to a, a customer giving them to their client. So my friend's dad, who had these court size seats, was like, look for a new job. So I started working in finance and, and selling, you know, hedge fund events and stuff like that because I have that background. And along the way, a, a friend of mine was like, yo, said, you know, Diddy's looking for this assistant, you know, you should check this stuff out. I'm like, Diddy's looking for his assistant. I'm like, all right, I'll check it out so I see what, what people are doing. So I write a little skit up for myself. I, I memorize it and I go to my, my friend's house and shoots the video. And I just do my own little ad living, throwing in stuff and, you know, a small story short, big story short, whatever you would want to call it, is um, I, I was able to get contacted from Bad Boy. Bad Boy contacted me and said, you know, we liked your video, you should come in, and I was like, you know, is this serious? And, and it was. And then I went in, I had a job, and I tell you, I mean, it's not the best thing for anybody to do, but when you're trying to pursue your dreams, you just got to do it. You know, I'm working at a conference company, I'm making good salary, work commission, but I knew it wasn't just me, but, I, you know, I'm good at talking on the phone and, and selling stuff. But this opportunity with, with P. Diddy came, and, and they started calling me and asking me to come in these interviews, and I was like, I gotta go. I said, I have to go see what New York is about and pursuing other things in life because if you only have tunnel vision, then you're not gonna have any B and C plan after your plan A. You know, so I looked at this as an opportunity to see what I really got going on within me. So I go to these interviews, I'm competing with these people, you know, I'm going in rooms, they got cameras everywhere, I'm handling the interview views good, I'm I'm doing whatever they need to set up marketing plan and, and business proposals and events. And out of 200,000 people, I end up being picked out of, you know, all these people to be one of three finalists to go on, on, on Oprah. And, you know, it was a wonderful opportunity. I remember that. You know, <laughs> I remember that, yeah. Oprah, you know, and yeah. millions of people watching me as I competed for this job for P. Diddy. And I didn't win the job. I came in second place, but I gave a, a great response. And, you know, the crowd was excited, Diddy was excited, and it was a good thing for me, and it just showed me that, uh, you know, just because I got my business degree and, you know, working in sales, that that's just not my, my main thing to focus on, so I, I grasped that opportunity and started trying to do all kinds of things in New York, um, you know, television shows, hosting at BET, small acting gigs with no words, whatever it was, just trying to get out there to be seen. Because even though I didn't believe, everybody else thought it was a tremendous thing to be on Oprah, so I needed to try to take advantage of that. So now I, I, I work for a private jet company, dealing with Lionel Richie, and getting them on flights, and then I connected with a, a watch company, selling nice down the watches. And I, you know, I focus on celebrities and athletes, and for me, I feel like I'm still connected to the sports. The basketball put me there to, again, to keep me in that element, to be in that team, frame to, to understand people around you and you know that's what I would stress is that you know sports is a key element for everybody and everybody should focus on, on playing some kind of sport because it just helps you grow as a person. One of the um, biggest topics on the interviews is the best players of all time for their sport um, as you play basketball so I want to get from you is, is who's the best who's your starting five East Chicago Central and then who is considered the um, greatest player in your opinion at East East Central so let's start off with point guard oh, man, this, is, uh, this is a tough one man. This is a tough one I have a lot of guards in my, in my head that I can think about so many uh, true point guards coming through the city but I I think I would have to go uh, with with Robert Battle, man. I think I gotta go with uh, Coop. with Coop, man, to, to be the star point. Just because I think we look we looked up to, to Coop, man. Uh, Coop was raw at the game, man. Uh, he could get to the basket, he could handle the ball. Um, you know, he, he put fear in some of these guards' hearts. You know, when you were out there guarding him, he was really gonna test you on the defensive end. And I think. Uh, a lot of the guards coming up behind him, really, he paved the way for, it, and they uh, they kind of developed some of their game from from Coop. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if people would admit that, 
but I, I know when we played, uh, you know, five on fives at the cage and in the projects, anywhere, you know, we was happy to compete with these guys because we knew if we could, if we could play with them, we could play with some of the best. So I gotta go with, with Cool on this one. Shooting guard. Shooting guard. Man. What if I said Red Bull? Charles Ricks. I think I'm gonna say Charles Ricks. Man. Etwan Moore. I, Marcus Jefferson. You know, uh, Lonzel French. Man, Jeffrey, my dude Jeffrey. You know, I'm gonna say this for the camera. He once said, "Dude, my dude Jeffrey, man, come on, six five, almost six six, body like a beast, man. This dude, this dude got the framework to be in the league, man. It's, that's again, that's what I'm saying about our community, man. We gotta." Got to get people involved to, to help us, man. We got some some true stars out here that could be doing a lot of things with, with themselves and um, the community, man. It, it really, it really messes us up, man. But uh, you know, I, it make me think of Jeffrey. But um, you know, again, accolades really kind of you know stray my opinion. So I, I want people to understand that, um, and I, I, I think I would have to go with. Uh, Charles Ricks on this. I mean, um, again, um, I don't mean to repeat myself, but I'm paving the way of another true athlete that you know came to the cage, lace them up, and um, put in work on us. It, you know, wouldn't come there to play lightly at all. Everything was always competitive. I mean, you can ask anybody who grew up around here playing basketball. In the summertime at the cage, you was getting in line trying to get winners, trying to play ball with these guys. So uh, I, I, I'm gonna go with. with Small four. Small four. Small four. And um, I think I'm going to have to go with, uh, I got two workhorses right now. My, my boy Woods who never call fouls. And then I'll have to go with uh, Kuzaki Powell. Man. Just uh, crazy, crazy Kuzaki Powell. And, uh, that guy was uh, insane out there on the court. Man. Uh, it's just a tough one here. Um, again, like we're going to deal with accolades, so on this one, I think I'm going to have to go with my boy Chris Woods, man. Um, Woods was uh, short when he was coming up, he got some height, he used to be in a, you know, y'all don't know about this kind of stuff, this is my man, Chris Woods would be in the basement of his crib with no lights on, dribbling the ball. Woods got his handle and dribbling in, in, in the dark, man, and then he just, you know, eating all that, that Mississippi food his mom, Miss Betty was cooking. You know, uh, he got that height, and, um, you know, that, that helped his game, you know, having the height and being able to have that handle and, and taking that through high school and, and, you know, going off to to Weaver State and, and, and going overseas and, and, again, paving the way for some of the, the players here to say, you know, you know, I know I, I want to go to the pros, but I ain't going to the pros, I'm going overseas and, you know, being able to go out there and experience the world, man, you know, so much in this world that's out there and we get caught up in this little bubble out here and not really go out and see things. So I'm going to have to go with Chris, Chris Woods on this one. Good stuff. Power forward. Power forward.
center. Carlton Baker. Carlton Baker, right now, if y'all find Udi somewhere, I guarantee he'll lace you up. And he'll get out there and give you 30. You know, that, that cat got skills, man. Some people you can't be taught to a game. They just they just got it. And I wish, I wish somebody was out there to help this, this guy, man. Um, you know, out there, you know, take him, take him across seas or something. Let him, let him make a few bucks and let him experience the game. And he still got talent, man. You know, this guy can still play. I don't know what y'all waiting on out there, you know, your coaches, your scouts or something. Somebody just needs to grab them and give them a chance, you know. I, I know it's different when you're done with basketball and getting picked up, but, you know, think of the Akeem Olajuwon who only played, like, you know, then start playing to the freshman, sophomore year of high school and being able to be some of the greatest athletes ever. You know, it's just you need the right person to be around these individuals and helping them. I guarantee you if we could get Rudy in somebody's trial, and if he was in good condition, the boy could play, man. The boy could flat out play. So I'm going to go with, with Rudy as my star center and my top five. Who's the best player to ever play at East Chicago Central? Well, I'm going you know, to speak up on this, and not everyone may agree, but I'm going to go with each one more. I have to go with each one more because of where he's at right now. Not just being in the pros. Again, this this game. It's not just about your skill level. It's about your mental level and being able to put yourself in certain situations and circumstances. And I think he was able, you know, again having a good brother like Ezel, you know, that's not crazy out there doing no retarded things. You know, having a strong family like they got and now, uh, you know, he easy keeping them in check and you know having them around us guys as as a young youth playing ball with us, man, and I just think, you know, he has this strong heart for, as a leader around here, we need leaders, man, you can't pick just the best basketball player around here because they was the best, I want to pick the best player that was a, a leader, and I think, you know, he proved a lot by, you know, taking his team to the championship, you know, having that big run through, through state to get there, you know, to, to be one of the, you know, right now, you know, I know Eric Gordon got hurt, but before his injury, man, Eric Gordon was one of the prominent guards in the league, man. I mean, he was out there doing his thing, got a nice jump again to the rack. I mean, they speak heavy on, on, on Mr. Gordon. And, uh, you know, each one was able to go out there and hold his own with him and uh, shows why, you know, he's on the big stage right now. And, you know, not just out there to, to be a scorer, but out there to be a player, out there to learn the NBA system. And uh, that's a beautiful thing, man. We need individuals like him, um, you know, to, to do these kind of things, and, you know, he's coming back to the community and, and doing camps and stuff for kids, and, and that's what we need, so I I would have to go with, with each one, I mean, there's so many other great players, but a lot of them fell short, uh, you know, to whatever it may be, you know, grades, school, you know, whatever it is, and uh, each one was able to, to keep a strong heart and have his family first, and, you know, God, and, and go out there and um, pursue his dream, and he's there, man, and that's, that's great, man, that's, that's the best thing I, I could think of, and I think even the people that disagree, they, they got to agree, because it's, it's great for our community, man, and, um, he, so he's a good person, and that's it's, it's a beautiful thing for us. What advice can you give to um, present and future athletes that may one day be in your shoes and come at your crossroads? I would tell uh, you know any upcoming athletes to uh, you know again as I preached in the beginning, uh, get a good strong circle of friends. You know, get with your friends and get to the gyms. Keep a ball with you. Practice the game. Study your school. You know, like can't be the best basketball player if you can't be educated enough to get the grades to be the best basketball player. So, I mean, your skill level can only go so far if your education level um, harpens you. So, uh, I would first recommend, you know, trying to get those books and get your things right. But again, having great friends, being with them, uh, studying your game, you know, 
practice makes perfect in anything, you know, in the repetition. The longer you out there practicing on it, the better you're going to get at, at your game. Uh, don't let anyone tell you that you can't be anything because you're your own individual and you're the only one that can stop yourself from succeeding. So words, uh, it's, it's like when we were, you know, when I was young, they say the sticks and stones may break my bones, but words should never hurt me. And, you know, as long as you look in the mirror every day and you can smile and look at yourself and be proud of you, that's all you got to do and, and just pursue that dream and, and do whatever it is you got to do to make it happen because you're the only person that can stop yourself, you know. You know it's, a, it's a few individuals I haven't been around much, but I went to the game the other day and, um, you know, I saw a couple couple kids that uh, are really good at EC, you know, uh, again, I don't mean to stress on some of my friends, but uh, a good friend of mine, Marcus Jefferson's nephew at, at Central, and, uh, you know, this kid, I hope you guys take take uh, grass into him and help him along the way if he needs you, and uh, we, got, we need to get tutors for these kids if, if they need them. If the education isn't right, we need to supply tutors to help them to be educated. Uh, we have a, Indiana's a state for basketball, we were breeders, but we sometimes um, we left behind, especially in a community like East Chicago and the Harbor and, and these areas where we're affected. And we got to stop being affected, but learn how to have the system help us to be able to pr produce these star athletes. I mean, we got some good guys over there. You got to help these guys along the way, to strengthen them mentally, physically, and help them in school to get the education they need to get to the next level. Um, and and I think that's that's a heavy burden, and we we gotta, you know, it's gotta be somewhere in this city where individuals can go and get tutors, and be able to go to play basketball, to go play football, to go swimming. Stuff like this has to be in East Chicago for these kids, man, because all they see is drugs, crime, and, and murder, and, and that doesn't help them. So if you're out there, whoever you are, you know, help help the youth. You know, I, I try my best from afar. And that's why I'm speaking here today to, to just let individuals know that you know anybody can make it, man. Um, you know I'm here. I'm from these streets too, man. And uh, I just was aggressive, and uh, I was ambitious, and I had dreams, and I, I didn't want my dreams to, to fade away, so I wanted to try to pursue them, you know. So I, I just went out and tried to do it. Said it's a um, pleasure having you on, man. Like I said, uh, I grew up with you, man. You know, like a brother to me. And I, I look forward to people seeing your interview, man. It was a great interview, um, real informative, and um, I'm glad you joined us. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, and, and God bless you all. And, man, good success and, you know, wisdom for the word is, uh, you know, first you have to you, you visualize something, you verbalize it, and then you realize it. And that's what I stress of uh, coming up visually what it is that I want to do, speaking up on it. And then making it happen and realize that it can happen. And um, you, you all should practice that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great learning process. And I think it's great for us all to think that way. This is Athletes Lives Network. Once an athlete, always an athlete. Thanks a lot.